All right, we made it to the job site. We got the dump trailer in place. Beautiful neighborhood. We've had a really unusually cool and wet winter and uh, spring has sprung, but we still have been getting uh, these cold days, cloudy, maybe even a little bit of rain later today. So yeah, what we got in here is a shower curb failure. And I want to bring it up because I get a lot of, I get a lot of questions about the shower curbs, uh, where they're failing. A lot of people mistakenly think that it's the shower door, that it's the shower door leak and it causes the baseboard outside to swell up and rot. It causes grout cracking and just nastiness right outside the shower curb. And I wanna bring it up because it's not a shower door problem mostly. Sometimes it is, but for the most part, this one had a, a good shower door on it, a framed shower door that was completely sealed. So I know it's not the shower door. And what it probably is, is the weep holes get clogged uh, the moisture comes up and over the curb because it can't get down to the weep holes in the drain. You know, we have a traditional style shower pan in here. So that's one of the reasons we go with the flow effects now is because it doesn't have the weep holes and those issues that the old traditional style showers have. So anyways, uh, we're getting set up right here. Let's go inside and check it out. You can see the water damage right here, this, this baseboard. This is what I was talking about. This is a complaint I get a lot and people think that it's a shower door leaking that's running out. But this door was sealed up really good with silicone. You can tell by the grout that water wasn't coming out here. The grout's nice and clean. So yeah, everything must be seeping from underneath the tile. It's caused all of these quarter rounds to crack. Uh, we got efflorescence. Any anytime when you have tile and you see this efflorescence, which is this white like mineral salt residue, that means there's water underneath the tile, and it's, it's when the water evaporates, it leaves behind these mineral deposits. So it's usually a sign where you have a lot of water underneath the tile, and you know we got mold growing in the corners and everything. So I believe this this is an old school drain, weep style. I bet if we take this out that the weep holes are gonna be clogged, so we'll check that out. But I'm gonna take this piece of baseboard off first. And yeah, we have, we have some mold there. But yeah, just water damage. You know, you can see, look at this drywall is just, just in bad shape. A lot of water has been coming coming into here. So that's a typical sign of what you'll see. Any, any wood that's around these shower curbs. And then, so what happens as water gets over the curb, it actually, the two by fours from underneath, you know, because all the waterproofing's over this, but if those two by fours get wet from moisture coming in on this side, they start to swell and that's why all this grout gets cracked and nasty. So we'll pop a couple tiles off here and see what's, what's going on. But yeah, so this is, this is floated. This is a, a wall float. I can tell this curb has been floated, but see that crack that's going through all the way down through the mortar bed. So of course the tile is gonna crack. Yeah, so this, see this big crack in here where the mortar has, has broken apart. These two by fours must really be moving. I'm gonna see if I can get under this and maybe peel off the front of the curb. hot mop in here and there's those two by fours I'm talking about. Yeah, it's definitely, definitely got moisture on it. These two by fours are wet. So yeah, as the weep holes clog up, the mortar, you can see this is about an inch of mortar on here. This is the hot mop waterproofing. And so even though this whole thing was waterproofed, 
Oh yeah, I actually got, I got some standing water right here in the mortar. Yeah, so this mortar is, is completely saturated, this mud. It's completely wet. Even with a little bit of standing water on it. It's amazing what capillary action will do in mortar as it wicks. All right, so let me see if I can get some of the top of the curb off here. So yeah, capillary action pulls it up and over the curb so it can get to those two by fours. So that's why you see us using uh, foam curbs a lot. You see us, we use a lot of foam curbs because even if this was foam and water did get to it, it doesn't expand and contract like wood does. Another good way to do it would be to use bricks. That way, again, if the bricks get wet, but especially dimensional lumber, two by fours, two by sixes, even pressure treated, uh, when they get wet, they expand and contract and twist and turn so much that building curbs and benches out of wood just isn't a good idea. So um, I want to see what caused all of this. And again, I'm going to check the weep holes here. I'll probably take out, you know, I don't know, square foot of tile right here around the drain. We'll see if we can see if the weep holes are clogged. Yeah, if you take a look, there's just a ton of moisture in, in this uh, this mud. It's just all wet. See, it's on my my hands. All all really saturated wet deck mud. So I'm gonna just chip away the rest of this stuff, and we'll see if we can find the weep holes here. No sign of weep holes. I think I know where they're supposed to be because on these drains they have little channels that show where the weep holes are. There's usually three in these cast iron drains. So there's a weep hole right here. I can see the little channel and I don't see any hole. This is all gunked up with tar and mortar, whatever, efflorescence. And then so that weep hole should be coming in like right in here somewhere. And again, it's, it's, it's non-existent. I don't see any of them inside this drain. But what I'll do is I'll take this screw and see if I can screw down and see where it comes out. And I'll try to Free up these weep holes just so you can see uh, what's going on if you have this going on at your house. Should be one right there. Yep. Yeah, so. Yeah, so that screw went through and you can barely see where it's starting to, to come through. One of the weep holes right there. Let's see. All right. All right. So I, I, yeah, I think that was one of the weep holes that had the efflorescence on it. So, yeah, and you see all the all the water that's just built up. No, that isn't. Oh yeah, it should be because there's there's a little channel. There we go. 
Now it should pop through on the other side. All right, so when I screw this, it should pop through on the other side. There it is, oops, sorry. Yeah, so there's the, there's the weep hole that was supposed to be there. So, there's one more, uh, same, same story though. Yeah, so we got two of the three weep holes unclogged. I'm not going to bother with this one. I just wanted to show you what was going on and how, how this possibly could be repaired or fixed. You know, if you were careful, maybe you could take out three. I do have a video on that if you're interested to see how I actually did a repair. I saved the guy like 10,000 bucks because we didn't end up doing the whole shower. I just took nine tiles out. He happened to have extras. I did this same procedure, unclogged weep holes, put in good gravel, weep protection, really clean those weep holes out, and then put it all back together. I'll put the link to that video in the description if you wanna see how a repair is done. Thankfully, this is a complete remodel anyways, but that shows what happens when these weep holes get clogged. Everything just goes up and over. Again, we use the flow effect system so we don't have this layer of mortar that just sits in here and gets saturated. Everything is waterproof right underneath the tile. These systems can and do work well. I think, and a lot of smart guys watch my channel, a lot of smart women watch my channel. Maybe we can design one of these drains that has access from inside that somehow there's some mechanism that you can unclog the weep holes from inside. Because as you can see, it was hard to even get a screw from the outside at the right angle. If they designed these drains so that you could just go in every once in a while and just poke out any like, efflorescence that comes out or soap scum or mineral deposits, whatever it is, that'd be pretty neat. Like if there was, you just take the cover off and maybe a tool and maybe those weep holes are ported in a way that allows a tool to get in easily to keep these things free so that everything drains down to the base. Because otherwise, once these get clogged, it goes, capillary action takes over, up and over the curb, down to the two by fours, everything swells. So I've seen this over and over again, especially in my area where we do these hot mops and mortar beds. Again, this is probably I don't know, what would you say? This is probably like maybe a 20 year old shower, I'm guessing around that, that period. So, I mean, it's held up over time, it's, it's, it's done its job, but I see these things start to happen within a year, within two years, within three years, especially if the weep holes were never freed up in the first place. Like this one, they were just filled with tar. So, you know, and then some people who don't understand the weep holes when they're doing a pan liner, they, put caulking over the weep holes. I see that quite a bit. So these are water in, water out systems. They're designed for the water to go down, it goes down to the weep holes in the drain. And if, if you doubt the mechanism, that the way that this is supposed to work, I do have another video that shows how it works with the weep holes. I clogged the drain and it was just a mortar bed, poured a bucket of water on it. And almost just as fast as I could pour five gallons of water on it, it went down to the pan liner, pre-sloped. We do pre-slope on our pan liners and all evacuated, up, evacuated out the weep holes like that. I mean, it was almost as fast as I can pour it in. I'll put that link down in the description below so you can see it. For all you doubters who doubt the pre-slope traditional weep style drain method, it can and does work when these weep holes stay free and the water can freely go in and freely out. But with this one, we're going to end up going with some newer technology. We're going to go in with the RSS system with the waterproofing directly under the tile so we don't have to worry about weep holes. But again, if you guys smart engineering minds can figure out a drain that has weep holes that are cleanable from the inside, that would be really cool. I'd be really interested in that and would be open to building showers that way. So. Until then, thank you very much for watching to the end of this video. I love you. I love being your tile coach. We'll see you on the next video.